The Lord be with you. Uh, once again, we'll have our same procedure. The uh, pulpit side will be commune first, the lectern side second. Uh, I'll be not wearing my mask up here, but I'll be wearing my mask down there when I'm close to you. Uh, please fill out the care cards on the front of your bulletins and put them in the box by the doors when, when you leave. This is the first Sunday of the month also, and we have Christian assistance uh, offering this morning, so there's a separate tray by both doors for Christian assistance. And once again, I will not greet people after the service, but if you want to talk to me, I'll, I'll, I'll be in my office. Um, let us then stand for the opening. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together, as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. We kneel or sit. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in His mercy, has given His Son to die for you, and for His sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by His authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We stand. Again, I will speak the intro it, and we'll all respond with the Gloria Patri. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High who is my refuge. No evil shall be allowed to befall you, no plague come near your tent. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, your mercy attends us all our days. Be our strength and support amid the wearisome changes of this world. And at life's end, grant us your promised rest and the full joys of your salvation through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading is from Zechariah, the ninth chapter. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion! Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem! Behold, your king is coming to you, righteous and having salvation is he, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall speak peace to the nations. His rule shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle lesson is from Romans, the seventh chapter. We know that the law is spiritual, but I am of the flesh, sold under sin. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now if I do what I do not want, I agree with the law that it's good. So now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells in me, that is, in my flesh. For I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I keep on doing. Now if I do what I do not want, it's no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do right, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inner being, but I see in my members another law, waging war against the law of my mind and making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand for the gospel. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 11th chapter. At that time, Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and, your, and learn from me, 
For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the gospel of the Lord. We confess our common faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be to each of you from God our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We pray again, part of our collect. Gracious God, be our strength and support amid the wearisome changes of this world. Amen. There are many wearisome changes in our world because of this pandemic. Parents and children are weary as they wonder about school in the fall. Workers are weary as they wonder about their jobs. No handshakes, no hugs, with masks covering our smiles. All this is weariness. An even greater weariness falls on millions of people afraid to worship in God's house because they have serious health concerns. Longing for the Lord's Supper compounds their loneliness and weariness. Pray for and reach out to those who are weary. But life itself does not need a pandemic to be wearisome. Life can be wearisome all by itself. For many people, life is eat, do something, sleep, repeat. Moments of happiness can be rare. Add to this all the riots and the mayhem, the fighting in the street with their children at their feet, and it's a mixed up, muddled up, shook up world. Helter-skelter in the summer swelter, a powder keg of emotions, pestilence and politics, riots and rage. This 4th of July reveals us as a nation divided. Worried is Scarlett O'Hara. Rhett, don't leave. Where shall I go? What shall I do? Someone once sang, Oh, a storm is threatening my very life today. If I don't get some shelter, I'm going to fade away. Give me shelter. Did you hear about the race riot in Memphis, Tennessee? Twelve churches were burned. Over 70 people were wounded. 46 people died. This race riot happened 154 years ago. Nothing changes. Rebellion against God and rebellion against each other goes on and on. Many people involved in our current societal revolution sincerely want to right the wrongs in society. Others sincerely want murder and mayhem. All promise a solution. But as someone once sang, meet the new boss, same as the old boss. The more things change, the more they stay the same. And no societal revolution can ever change the sin-filled human heart. Only Christ can. When does this all end? This will finally end on the last day. And Jesus comes to judge the living and the dead. Where did this all start? Well, it started with a revolution in the Garden of Eden. It was a quiet riot. Adam and Eve tell God something along the lines of, I don't care what you want anymore. This is my life. By their rebellion, they separated themselves from a loving God. But thank God, He came searching for them. However, nothing is the same after their initial rebellion. Their desire to love God turns into a desire to disobey. Our first family still worships God, but right during worship, sin flares up. One of their sons' offering is God, son's second-rate offering is not. Well, the firstborn son of Adam commits cold-blooded murder. 
Cain kills Abel all because, an, all because of an offering given during worship. Ever since, hatred and murder flow from the human heart. How Adam and Eve must have wept. And what does Cain say about all this? Well, something along the line of, I don't care what you say anymore. This is my life. We all share the weakness of Cain, fighting the sin inside us and fighting the sin we see around us is worrisome and wearisome. It's, is this fight worth it? Yes. The Holy Spirit in us fights for us. To give us Christ's victory over sin brings us here to God's house or listening on Facebook. Here at the foot of the cross, the Holy Spirit leads us to lay down our sinful desires to put ourselves first. At this altar, He empowers us to give up our misuse of God's busyness of not listening to God's Word, our desire to disobey the authorities whom God has placed over us, and our prejudices toward anyone different than us. Here in our Father's house, He leads us to confess and reject our lust, our gossip, our coveting of our neighbor's wife, and our coveting of our neighbor's possessions. But we find ourselves falling into the same sins again and again. Wretched man that I am, we sob with St. Paul, who will deliver me from this body of death? We hate this sin within us. And then Jesus says personally to each of us, Be of good cheer. Thy sins be forgiven thee. Matthew 9, 2. Through word and water, bread and wine, He removes our sin and our guilt. And we shout with St. Paul, Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Here at the foot of the cross, here at the font, here at the altar, is the answer to hatred, anger, prejudice, rebellion, rioting, disobedience, lust, arrogance, and selfishness. Jesus takes all these sins off you and off me. He piles them on himself. And our sins kill him because the wages of sin is death. But through baptism, you are a child of God. Your name is written in His will. He dies and you inherit His possessions. You inherit His sinlessness, His purity, His love, His trust in His Father, His fearlessness, His tender care, and His strength. Here is Christ Jesus, crucified, buried, risen, and ascended to the right hand of the Father for you and for your salvation. How do you then live? Go for a swim. The Holy Spirit enables you to swim constantly in your baptismal water. And there He drowns your sinful desires and leads, you to le and leads you to live a new life. But pandemic or no pandemic, you can still feel lonely as you follow Christ. Therefore, in God's Word, Jesus gives you His promise. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Hebrews 13.5 At night, hear the voice of Jesus. In darkness, Jesus walks on water to his disciples, and they're terrified. But he immediately says, Be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. Mark 6.50 Then the world, when the world, shows its true colors and acts crazy, hear Jesus' voice. These things I have spoken to you, that in me... <clears throat> In me you might have peace. In this world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome. John 16:33. When the weight of living 
is crushing you down, hear the voice of Jesus. Come unto me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Given his forgiveness, we want to please Jesus. In him, his yoke becomes easy, and the burden of a Christ-like life becomes light. Fifty-two years ago, the Beatles sang, You say you want a revolution. Many think that revolution can change the human heart. Now, John Lennon wanted a peaceful revolution, but all revolutions throughout history prove one thing. No revolution on the outside will change hearts on the inside. Without Christ, Satan rules. The only real revolution of the human heart occurs only through baptism and the Word of God. This change is strengthened only through the Word of God and the body and blood of Christ. The only revolution that lasts, the only revolution in history that lasts, occurred on a cross. Helter skelter in the summer swelter, to whom shall we go in this mixed up, muddled up, shook up world? Come unto me, ye weary, and I will give you rest. O blessed voice of Jesus, which comes to hearts oppressed. It tells of benediction, of pardon, grace, and peace, of joy that hath no ending, of love that cannot cease. Yes, the foe is stern and eager, and the fight is fierce and long, but thou hast made us mighty and stronger than the strong. In our Old Testament lesson, in a play on the word prisoner, God says to the prophet Zechariah, Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. In Christ, we are in God's stronghold, the stronghold of hope. And hope in Christ will not disappoint. We rejoice. Weariness be gone. We say with St. Paul, Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 15, 57. Thanks be to God indeed. Amen. Now that peace of God which passes all our understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We stand for prayer. Let us pray. O merciful God and Lord, bless your church. Make bold our witness before the nations. Give us faithful pastors and church workers. Bring to us soon here at St. Luke, the pastor you have chosen for us. Lord, in your mercy, heal our nation by turning us in repentance back to you and your Son, Jesus Christ. Provide our nation with faithful leaders who will obey your word, protect and defend us, and preserve the precious gift of liberty. Lead us to use our liberty for your glory and for the good of others. Lord, in your mercy. Lead us to delight in your law and to love what is good and true and lovely. Help us to daily wage war against the old Adam within us. Quickly bring us back to you when we stray from your word. Lord, in your mercy. Hear us for Callan, Tony, Shelley, Mary, Glendale, Dylan, Mary Ellen, Chris, John and Ethel, Pastor Hines and Ellen, Chuck, Michael, Mildred, Marion, Eugene and Marge, Letty, Pat, Peggy, Al, Jim and Doris, Pat, Doris, Sally, Bill and Eunice, Christine, Ed, Ron and Janice, 
Carl and Betty, and those we name in our hearts. Keep them in your stronghold of hope and deliver them from all evil. Lord, in your mercy, grant us true repentance as we receive the body and blood of Christ for the forgiveness of our sins. By the Holy Spirit, increase in us true love, compassion, and holiness in thought, word, and deed. Lord, in your mercy. All these things we pray you to grant us according to your merciful goodness and for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment, you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve, who ate the forbidden fruit, and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet, in your great mercy, you promised salvation by a second Adam, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. 
This do in remembrance of me. In the same manner also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which was shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Take eat, the body of Christ, given for you. Take drink, the blood of Christ, shed for you. Take eat, the body of Christ, given for you. Drink, the blood of Christ, Body of Christ, given for you. Take eat the body of Christ given for you. 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 body of Christ given for you body of Christ given for you body of Christ given for you hmm. the body of Christ given for you body of Christ given for you Body of Christ given for you. 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 The body of Christ given for you. 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 
body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you the body of Christ given for you the body of Christ given for you body of Christ given for you body of Christ given for you body of Christ given for you. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you steadfast in that true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, 
that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.